All right, now we're gonna talk about in vitro fertilization, why it happens, when to use it, okay? So when we think about in vitro fertilization, first thing is in vitro, what does in vitro mean? In vitro means outside of the body. So any kind of fertilization that takes place outside of the body is coined in vitro fertilization. So who are the people that are usually susceptible? People that are infertile, whether they've had a lot of STIs and it causes come out of some kind of blockage for the fallopian tubes for females, men having very low sperm counts, age. So like I said, the fertilization and just giving birth is a complete miracle because there's so many parameters that can go wrong that can easily make the patient infertile. So this new technology in vitro fertilization, and by new I mean like about 30 years old, 30 probably even longer, maybe back in the 70s or late 70s. This technology was designed in order to promote fertilization, in order to create a woman that is infertile to become pregnant. So now, we look at this structure here. So this is the uterus attached to the fallopian tube. Eventually, you have this big circle here that's called the ovaries. So there's several steps that take place in order for fertilization to take place. So the proper in vitro fertilization technique that needs to be taking place is the first thing is, is some kind of hormonal stimulation. So let's do this in yellow. So you need some kind of hormonal stimulation to promote ovulation. So certain hormones that can promote the ovaries to release the eggs. So what would be the hormones? So think about it. What hormone triggers ovulation? So the hormones that were involved were estrogen, follicular stimulating hormone from the anterior pituitary and luteinizing hormone from the anterior pituitary. So synthetic hormones are used to actually force this egg to be shunted outwards. So now you have an egg that's being created in the, within the follicle. Now, before any kind of ovulation takes place, so the egg is present, so we wanna prevent any kind of ovulation because we want to actually take it directly from the ovaries. There is some kind of, of ultrasound that's used. So ultrasound is a technology used to visualize what's going on here, specifically in the ovaries. So an ultrasound is used, so some kind of vaginal ultrasound is used to use as an imaging technique to remove the egg directly. So you need to remove the egg directly from this. All right. So when this is called through the technology of laparoscopy, so a laparoscope is used to come in, grab through the abdomen, grab some eggs, and then use it, harvest it for preparation of in vitro fertilization. Next, the third thing that needs to be taking place is hormonal stimulation. So you grab the egg, but it hasn't ovulated yet. So you grab the egg, pre-ovulatory eggs, and during pre-ovulation to ovulation, there is a spike, as I mentioned, a spike of luteinizing hormone, LH. When LH spikes, this causes the, the complete maturation of the egg. So a lot of doctors, what they use for the third step is stimulation with, with HCG, human chorionic gonadotropin. And so this allows for the final maturation of the egg. So now you have a mature egg in your hand right now. What else do you need in order to allow for this proper fertilization to take place? You need sperm. So now we have these, after these oocytes were retrieved within 34 to 37 hours, what's important is to grab immediate sperm in order to allow proper fertilization. So we grab sperm, sperm retrieval. We have sperm now. So a man goes to the back room, ejacu masturbates, ejaculates, and removes this specific sperm that they put on a specific petri dish. So now you have sperm and now you have egg. So how, what do you do next? You need to combine them. So the in vitro section part came, comes in here where the doctor or lab technician comes in and grabs the sperm and egg and inserts it through in vitro fertilization. So now it's on a petri dish ready to, together, so the sperm and egg are together for this in vitro fertilization to take place. And then finally, after now you have a fertilized egg, what's the fertilized egg called? 
a zygote. So now the zygote comes in, it's removed from the Petri dish, and with ultrasound, it is uh, ultrasound imaging, it is implanted into the uterus. So this zygote is now implanted into the uterus. But actually, what's really important is, specifically the zygote doesn't necessarily go in the uterus. What they do during in vitro fertilization, actually, it's really important to note, is that they keep the cells there to proliferate. So they proliferate into, from the zygote, to the morula, and then eventually the blastocyst. And what's important is, this blastocyst is actually the specific cell that gets implanted specifically in the uterus. Other technologies that they use for kind of any kind of in vitro fertilization may keep the zygote, but the zygote may actually migrate rather than the uterus. We, they might insert it specifically into the fallopian tube. Another example of this would be ZIFT, zygote intrafallopian transfer. That happens. And so the blastocyst now is able to be implanted. So you have a blastocyst that is implanted. So let's write this here one more time just to clarify. So the blastocyst is implanted here specifically in order to allow for the process of embryogenesis to take place. And so this is a very basic schematic of how in vitro fertilization takes place.